Hey guys, it is Freshly Squeezed Films here, and welcome to another story time video. And today, I'm going to be telling you guys the time I, well, not time, times, I've gotten tooth surgeries. I have gone through lots and lots of tooth surgeries throughout the past year. Lots and lots, as in three. But yeah, that's, yeah, all three of them were pretty painful. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to get into the details of that. But first, if you have not watched the very first story time where I talked about the time I busted my um, tooth out uh, on a swing set, you can go watch that video. It's the very first story time I ever did, and it also has to do with teeth. But yeah, guys, let's get into the story time. So this whole thing with my teeth um, started way back in like 2014. Um, yeah, I, I pretty much found out that I need to have braces in the next few years. But then over the past two years, it just kept on getting delayed and delayed because they've had to do stuff with my teeth. Yeah, um, yeah, and I have like a little um, expander thing in my um, teeth right now. I've had it for a while. A, a long time, but yeah, this whole tooth journey has um, lasted like about five years now, and I still don't have braces, but yeah, I'm expecting to get braces sometime this year, they said, um, probably before um, school starts next year, I'll probably have braces, unless something goes wrong or whatever, and they somehow delay it again, but they're pretty sure that I'm going to have braces pretty soon here, but yeah, um, so this um, first surgery thing I'm going to talk about in this video was last year in March. I had to get um, the crown of one of my um, teeth <laughs> removed. It was on, yeah, it was on this side. I had to get a crown removed because my tooth wasn't growing right. So yeah, they, I was not put under anesthesia in that one. Um, and not, at least not in that one. <laughs> but um, yeah, they had to drill that. And um, yeah, it lasted quite a while because it was pretty hard for them. But it ended up happening, so I had half of my tooth gone, so yeah, um, and then, um, the second surgery happened in December of last year, um, they figured out that, um, the crown thing didn't work as they were expecting, so I had to get the rest of that tooth drilled and another one pulled, I had to get a tooth pulled, um, on that side on the second time, and I had to get, <laughs> and I had to get that, um, tooth, um, completely removed the second half of it that they removed the crown, so yeah, um, it seems like they're done there, but they were not done there. <laughs> like two weeks later in December, um, this one happened like a few days before Christmas. They had to freaking <laughs> they had to freaking drill into my gums because um, one of my teeth was not growing right, so they had to drill into my gums quite a bit for the tooth to come back up. So yeah, they did that. That one I was put under anesthesia because. That would hurt a lot if I wasn't. <laughs> and, um, yeah, um, my mom told me it lasted about an hour. It did not feel like an hour. And it's, when you're put under anesthesia, time goes by a lot faster. Because I woke up and it just felt like a few minutes had passed. But it was apparently in over an hour. But, yeah, um, <laughs> that's pretty much it for um, this story time. It, it went pretty fast. But, yeah, those were the three, two surgeries I had to go through last year. But, yeah. Planning on getting braces this year. Um, no more major surgeries like those three are probably going to happen before unless something goes horribly wrong, like I said, which hope not. But yeah, that is the story time for, day, for today, my tooth surgeries. So now let's get on to the review for this video. And today I'm going to be reviewing the latest season of Survivor, David vs. Goliath. So, Survivor, David vs. Goliath ended um, back in December, and the season started in September, went on for a few months, as all Survivors do, and yeah, I'm very hyped for Edge of Extinction, the newest season coming next month, but yeah, right now I'll be reviewing David vs. Goliath, the latest season, so yeah, this season was freaking incredible, oh my gosh. The past few seasons have been pretty decent. I thought Ghost Island was pretty decent. HHH was pretty decent. Game Changers was a little bit above decent because that was obviously an all-returnee season. And I love all-returnee seasons. I love returning players in Survivor. A lot of people say that Game Changers sucked. It was worse than HHH and Ghost Island. I don't agree with that. I love returning players in Survivor, so I loved that season. But yeah, 
uh, the past few seasons have been mediocre, but David vs. Goliath shocked everyone. When Survivor David vs. Goliath um, was announced, I was like, oh, it's going to be like Millennials Gen X and HHH and other something vs. something twist. But it was not just that. It was incredible. The cast was freaking incredible. I would say it's one of the best casts I've ever seen in Survivor. I would say that, but I don't know. It might be the best newbie cast I have ever seen in the history of Survivor. Like, it's that good. The cast was so good. Everyone came to play. There were so many standout players this season. So many that I want to see come back for um, future seasons. Let's see. Let's see if I can name some. Uh, Christian, Davey, Carl... Um, Nick, Mike, Angelina, Natalie, um, psh, th there's a lot, John, Dan, there is a lot of standout players in this season, Gabby, I'm sorry, <laughs> forgot about Gabby, Kara, no, okay, I'm done, I'm done, there is so many great players that need to come back, it was such a great cast of newbie players, everyone came to play, the season started off strong with a medevac of Pat, Rip Pat, that was a sad medical evacuation. Hopefully Pat comes back in the future because he was a warrior in that medical evacuation. But yeah, um, then the next episode we had Jessica get um booted. I mean, we didn't really get to see much of Jessica. She seemed she seemed like an outgoing, not outgoing, but like I don't know. She seemed she had she seemed like she had the right mindset to go further in the game, but unfortunately she got blindsided. Um, and a few votes uh, more than Lyrsa, which was booted a few episodes later. But yeah, um, and there was Jeremy. He played way too hard, I think. Jeremy went out way too hard. He is a great character, but I don't know. It just it just was not good gameplay going out that hard. And yeah, he got booted. Um, I think Natalie should have gotten booted that episode, but whatever. I, I guess I can understand Jeremy. And then we had Natalia Blindside, where Alec flipped on Natalia. That was an incredible move. I mean, she, she was a little bit bossy, but I think I I I don't really know. That tribe was that tribe was pretty decent. I think Natalia was the biggest threat on that tribe at the moment. But yeah, and then after that, we oh yeah, before that we had B. I totally forgot about B. Um, B quit earlier that episode of the Natalia vote. I I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, B quit. Um, B is probably the most forgettable player of the season because she barely got any screen time. She got no screen time. The most screen time she got was when she quit before the challenge. But yeah, um, then obviously Natalia already said that. Then we had Natalie. Natalie was, if not one, if not the biggest villain of this season, along with Angelina. Those two were the biggest villains of the season. Natalie got on everyone's nerves, and I wanted her out as the first to boot. But yeah, um, <laughs> and then the last um, preseason boot was Lyrsa. She was weak at challenges. Um, overall, that tribe, that Navidi tribe, after the tribe swap, was pretty weak. It was a very weak tribe with um, Nick, Mike, and Angelina, the last remaining three. And they all three of them ended up getting to the final three. I did not think that would happen. I thought all three of them would be out before then because that, that was a very weak tribe. But three weak people ended up going to the final three. But yeah, first merge boot, we had Elizabeth. Um, don't really need to say much about Elizabeth. I mean, yeah, oh, oh, I guess I have something to say. She um, was voted out unanimously. But yeah, um, and then we have the John vote. The John vote was the best vote of the season. Oh my gosh, that John vote was incredible with Davy's idol to save Christian. And then Dan's idol to save Angelina, which you didn't need. And then Christian, Davy, and Carl blindsided freaking John. Not freaking John. John, the freaking bro chacho freaking john incredible mayor of slam town i love john john's incredible he needs to come back speaking of needs to come back and great vote outs we have dan 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 he got robbed dan got robbed um the first idol he played he played wrong but that freaking idol nullifier, Dan got robbed. I'm saying it. Dan Dan just got robbed. The idol nullifier was way too powerful. Dan played the idol correctly, but ended up getting nullified. I think the idol nullifier is way too powerful. But at the same time, if Carl would have played the idol nullifier wrong, then yeah, it 
Dan wouldn't have gotten out. So I guess it's not too powerful because Carl needed to find the right time and who was going to play an idol that travel was still very unfair on Dan's part. But yeah, rip Dan. And also the steal the vote was played um, from Nick. And I mean, eh, he didn't really need to play it. That was kind of wasted. Just to ensure that Dan would get out. And then we had Alec, who's no longer invited to come back. Unfortunately, I loved Alec. But yeah, he um, had some issues on social media before the show. So now he's not allowed to come back. But I, Alec was still a great player. Yeah, he was voted out because he was a um, challenge beast. Not really a challenge beast because Christian did end up beating him. That episode he was voted out on that six hour challenge, which was incredible. And then after that, what was the boot after that? Carl. Carl got on a lot of people's nerves because he was very bossy and direct. And yeah, he got blindsided. And then we had Gabby. I don't know. I don't know why they wanted to blindside Gabby. She wasn't really a big threat. I think they should have taken out Christian and Davey and other big threats before Gabby. Just my opinion. Don't really have much to say about that vote out. And then we had Christian. Freaking Christian. The one I wanted to win it all. He got out. Uh, just shy of the finale. Rip Christian. He needs to come back. He is the best player of David vs. Goliath, Christian. But yeah, now for the finale. We had Davey get out. Another person I wanted to win and get to the final three and win. Davey. Dang it. Davey. But anyway. um, <laughs> And then we had Allison get out. I mean, I kind of expected her to get out. I, every, literally everyone did not like Allison. I kind of thought it was funny that everyone didn't like her. She was a pretty hated player at that point in the game when she got voted out. Then we had the fire making challenge with Mike and Kara. Kara lost. Mike won. Yeah, and then we have the final three, and Nick won fair and square. Nick is a great winner. I do agree that Nick should have won Um. Yeah, uh, over Mike and Angelina. But yeah, overall, a great, 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 great season. I love it. I would give it a 10 out of 10. It's one of it's probably the best season at least in the 30s. The 30s of Survivor. I don't know. I like Cambodia. Ooh. Cambodia and David vs. Goliath are the best two seasons in the 30s. Cambodia was also great, but yeah, we're not talking about Cambodia. But yeah, David vs. Goliath was great. So yeah, that is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this story time and review of Survivor David vs. Goliath. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.